Well, on our show today, uh, we have a, a new guest, although she is with uh, some folks that we hear about all the time, BreastLink. We have Dr. Nimi Kapoor, and you are a breast and thyroid surgical oncologist. Welcome. That's right. Thank you. Nice to have you on our show. Great to be here. Uh, the first uh, uh, thing I want to know is a little bit about your background and uh, how long have you been uh, practicing? So I've been with Breastlink for the past two years. Okay. I started at the mothership in Orange. Oh, really? Um, okay. And uh, recently we opened the Laguna Hills site to kind of help accommodate South County. Mm -hmm. There's just too many people coming all the way from uh, San Clemente and, and South right. up, all the way up to Orange. Okay, how, how did you uh, get to be an oncologist? What made you choose that as your specialty? So oncology is the, the study of cancer. Mm -hmm. And as a surgical oncologist, my focus is on surgery for cancer. And I've focused on breast and thyroid cancers as my specialty. Okay, and explain the connection between the two because uh, quite often yeah. you do hear uh, that if uh, someone has breast cancer that they often look at the thyroid and other parts as well, but how are they connected? There, there is a rare genetic link between breast and thyroid cancers, but I think for me and my training and background, more interestingly, the two are both endocrine organs, so they're both responsive to hormonal stimulation, and mm -hmm. all of my research and background has been on endocrine systems, starting all the way back to college. Uh, so I've always been drawn towards the endocrine system, um, and both really are interrelated in that, in that, in that form. For breast cancer, there's a lot of genetic um, research that's, mm -hmm. gone, that's been, you know, predates even med school for me, um, and genetic differentiation of different breast cancers. And actually, it turns out in thyroid cancer, there's the same kind of modeling. And in my research for thyroid cancer, we use the breast model for the thyroid cancers and we found the same kind of thing. Interesting. So. Are you finding with all the research that you have read and that uh, you, you've probably been a part of in some ways, just, just from what you do, that are, are you seeing that in cancers in general, that there may be a genetic link that we are possibly certain people more predispositioned to get cancer rather than others? You may have the exact same environmental situations growing up, but are you seeing that? Yeah, certainly. There's definitely certain populations, especially younger people who develop mm -hmm. cancers early on, especially multiple different types of cancers. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a genetic link. Okay. Have they found any of, of the, uh, the actual genes that are there yet? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And so some of the panel testings include things like P10 for Cowden syndrome, which is a correlation between breast and thyroid cancers. So there's a lot more research and interest in this area. So maybe one day we'll get to that point where there could be some sort of a vaccine or something that, that Vaccines could be are done. very much on the rise, and I think it's definitely a, a big part of research in both, and definitely in breast cancer, as well as other kinds of cancers like melanoma. Yeah, that's great. Good news. Uh, BreastLink, you've been with them a couple week or a couple years, I should say. Yeah. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, why you came uh, to BreastLink a couple years ago. So uh, BreastLink is, is really different. Um, I've trained at um, wonderful academic places like Cornell and Sloan Kettering. I came over to the, back to the West Coast where I grew up, uh, John Wayne Cancer Center and Cedar sinai All of them are these amazing academic centers with multidisciplinary work, meaning mm -hmm. when you're treating a cancer patient, you have surgery, radiology, medical oncology, radiation oncology, and plastics all uh, required for the treatment and care of a cancer patient. At BreastLink, what is very, very special about it is all of these come not just under one roof, but even in the same exam room. Mm -hmm. So one of my cancer patients comes in and sees me. At the same visit, in the same room, at the same appointment time, they can also see a medical oncologist and sometimes also their plastic surgeon. It's very special. I think it's a very unique thing, and it's great for patient care. What is um, on call? I'm going I'm to try and pronounce this here. <laughs> Oncoplastic reconstruction. So this is um, it's a secret because a lot of uh, community surgeons don't talk about it. Okay. Um, it's it's where we treat a patient for cancer. Often we do a, what's called a lumpectomy. Right. We don't take off the whole breast. We we save most of the breast and just remove a small this, the cancer. Um, when that happens in some patients, that that causes a, a, a missed shape. 
mm -hmm. um, uh, an asymmetry between the two breasts. One breast may become smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and to help with that, we actually offer uh, oncoplastic reconstruction, meaning we have a plastic surgeon help us provide symmetry at the same time at the same surgery. So that's great for cosmetic outcomes, but there's a, you know, a lot of older patients say, well, I don't, I don't care how I look so much, just get rid of the cancer and mm -hmm. move on. The, the real secret is that if we can take out enough tissue around the cancer, we can actually avoid radiation, especially in patients 65 and over. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the best ways of achieving that and, and actually sparing people from extra treatment. Okay, so that you can, at the time... That we can do can at the do. same time, yeah. and a lot of places can't do that because it really requires coordination and patience with scheduling appointments with a plastic surgeon, scheduling surgery with a plastic surgeon, and that takes time, and in the community and other places, it requires a lot of delay, and patients don't like waiting. And right. this, the benefit with BreastLink is we can do that at the same time. Very good. New surgical techniques are always coming out. Absolutely. What has been some of the advances that you've seen yeah. over so, the past um, couple of years? I guess five years ago, nipple sparing mastectomy was one of the biggest advances we had mm -hmm. in um, our specialty. Definitely a more challenging technical operation that requires a lot of extra training and time to understand how to actually save the nipple, the areola, and all of the skin around the breast while removing all the breast tissue from below. Right. Um, so that offers sometimes for the right patient the best cosmetic outcome. Um, that's definitely a big and on the rise and we're doing this routinely. Um, one other very unique thing we do is something called intraoperative radiation. So uh, normally when patients have um, a small breast cancer and have a lumpectomy, they need six weeks up to seven weeks of radiation. That's radiation every day, five days a week for six or seven weeks. It's quite cumbersome and onerous on a patient. Intraoperative radiation is targeted radiation just to the cancer. So at the same time of surgery. So it's one treatment for mm -hmm. their, their surgery and the radiation all done in one time. And, and we offer that it's quite a complex thing to have uh, such a big team effort. And it's great that we can have this. Yeah, it really is. And the fact that uh, they have such a great team over there and work together to, uh, for the best outcome. And yeah. that's really what it's all about. Absolutely. I mean, coordination of this care requires um, a, a, a monstrous world, an effort to, to do. Yeah, it does. And it, it, you're, the, the, uh, the the tagline that BreastLink uh, has often talked about, and it's, it's in their ad, is one center, one focus, one team. And I think the one focus part is probably the most important. Yeah, part and of actually, you don't, you, women go to these, um, you know, women's imaging centers, breast mm -hmm. centers, that they appear to be dedicated to only breast imaging. Mm -hmm. At BreastLink, we're not just appearing like breast-focused people, but we're actually all specialized. Mm -hmm. So our radiologists have all had extra training and have focused their whole careers on breast imaging only. Our mm -hmm. surgeons have all had extra training and have only focused their whole careers on the treatment of breast diseases. Yeah. Same with our medical oncologists. They're not treating every kind of cancer head to toe. They're up to date with all the latest research. They know what's the best av avenues of treatment and the most latest treatments. And really to do that for breast cancer really requires complete dedication. All right, very good. And it's great to have you Thank on. You, uh, you too. I, th I find it um, really interesting about uh, the genetic part of it and that maybe someday we can uh, get to that point where there's, uh, that, that vaccines can be taken as we do with other things. Uh, you know, when someone is just a young child, if they see that this is uh, part of their, uh, of their genetic background, yeah, great. there's definitely um, interest in prevention. That's definitely where we need to go with research. Mm -hmm. we've, we've figured out some of the most sophisticated cures and surgical techniques. The, obviously, the next mm -hmm. step is finding that way of prevention. There's some simple things that can be done. It doesn't have to necessarily be a vaccine. Right. You know, environmental factors, um, exercise, diet, mm -hmm. um, but also certain vitamins are also very helpful that we know about. All right, very good, Doctor. Nice to have you on. Thank you very and much. And if you want to contact BreastLink, their number here in uh, Laguna Hills is 949-770-0797. Uh, Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Uh,